Hello everyone and welcome to Watch Your Story. This one's a little different. It's called Flip the Script. And today I'm here with Todd Shoemaker and he's going to be doing the interviewing. Thanks for the challenge. <laughs> so GW, tell us, you know, tell us a little bit about you. Like who is GW? Okay. I was uh, raised in Northeast Tennessee and always drugged to church. And there was one morning when my mom was cooking and had woke me up and I knew it was time to get up. And so I kept laying there. Then she came in and said, get up, it's time to go. And uh, she flipped the light on. I kept laying there. My dad came in with a wet wash rag mm. and this was when it was colder. So mm. came in and put the, wa the wet wash rag all over me and then pulled the covers off and left them in the floor. Ah. And I had said, when I grow up, I'm never going to go to church again. And he said, until you grow up, get up. Mm. So that kind of started. So for about 20 some years, I, true to my word, I didn't go to church. What brought you back? So I had moved to uh, Orlando and had identity theft. They got into my checking, my credit cards, my savings. Okay. It was a long process, but God was still working on me. Okay. And that's when they had come to foreclose on me and, mm. and I remember going to pray, God, you haven't heard from me in a very long time and uh, I'm a good person, why did this happen? Right. And I remember him saying so clearly because you built your house on sand. Mm. So mm. then it was like mic drop, Okay. phone yeah. hung up on me. He can do that. How do, you, how do you argue with that? Right. So what would you say to that young person that's they're being dragged to church. They're not, they don't appear to be getting anything out of it. What would you say to them? I would say, don't look at the other people. Don't look at the pastor. Just go in and <clears throat> keep focused on, on Yeshua. Look, look at yourself of what you're going for. Tune everybody else out. It's kind of like uh, if you've ever filled up ice trays, mm -hmm and you're at the sink and you have to get them from the sink to the freezer. It's the most concentration that you ever have to get it from this point to this point. Right. And I think that's the key is not focusing on other people. Look at, look at what Yeshua is wanting you to focus on okay. and think about the interaction, the relationship. Okay. Because it's not about a religion, it's about right. a relationship. What would you say to the parents, grandparents, who are dragging their kids, grandkids, to church? I would say when it's shoved down your throat, it causes you to not want to, you want to re regurgitate it. Okay. And it's the thing that our actions, and it's living out the word right. as not going through the process, right. but it's every day. When, when you go to, to church or whatever you do, mm -hmm. you might act one way there, but it's when you get out into the world, your job, you get home, right. are you acting the same? Right. What, would you, what advice would you give to a youth pastor who has a kid like you that was being dragged, that obviously probably looked like they didn't want to be there, probably acted like they didn't want to be there. What would you say to that youth pastor who has a young GW sitting in their class? Woo! All I can say is love them where they're at. Right. Okay. Because that's, uh, you can't force someone into doing something they don't want to do. And even if they do do that, they're still not going to want to do it. Okay. I think it's just loving on them where they're at and yeah. letting the process pray for them. Right. Because right. prayer, I mean, my family, I know the prayers that my mom had prayed for me are still being answered. Right. Yeah. What are some of the lessons that you've learned since you came back to God? Like what are like two or three key things that God's really shown you since you've come back to Him? I think one, stop whining and, and just 
listen, you can pray, but it's, it's being in the Word, but it's listening. Be still and, and let God do what God wants to do, but it's also being obedient. Mm. When He asks you to do something, sometimes I have been asked to do the strangest things. Like there was a man with a chainsaw on a pole, and, and God said, as you're walking, go over and tell him that, that I love him. And I said, huh? my gosh, I, there's three men over there, and that one's got a chainsaw on a pole. And he, yeah. and he said, but I've asked you to do this. I want you to remember the times where you've prayed for something, and I've sent someone. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to do this, I'm like, can you send somebody else? Right. He goes, I can, but they're going to receive your blessing. Right. And I finished walking on around. I said, okay, if you want me to, if you want me to do that, bring him back out. Mm. And so I walked back down and he was gone. Walked around the corner and came back. He was out there. Mm. And so I went over to him, catty cornered, so he, that didn't surprise him. Right. Yeah. And I just said, hey, you know, God wanted me to tell you that Yeshua loves you. And I didn't break stride. I just kept on moving. Yeah. And he turned his head around the other and he goes, I love him too. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, and you got that. You got that blessing. You got that blessing of knowing that 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 individual is is going to be with you in heaven. Yeah. yeah. So what would you um, what would you say to that Christian brother, that Christian sister, who says, "I don't need to read my Bible. I don't need to go to church." What What would be your answer to that, your advice to them? I had never started reading my Bible until last March of 2019. And when I did open it up, the only page I would read would be Psalms 91. Okay. Yeah. And one day that page fell out. Mm. And I said, oh my gosh. And God said, that's the only page you ever read anyway. Mm. Woo. So there's some God smacks. Right. But the one thing is listening to the Bible as I used to travel the whole state. I was absorbing it that way. Right. And so when I'm out and about, as I've started to read and, and listen, if someone is not speaking the truth, mm. if they're preaching something that's not of God's Word, I have read it and, and I know that it's not, it's not real. Right. So how do you know that you could be following a, a false prophet mm -hmm. if, if you don't know the Word and waiting on someone well, that pastor didn't teach me. Well, this teacher didn't teach me. Well, this church didn't do this. Right. I don't remember reading in here where it says this is the government's responsibility, a pastor's responsibility. Right. It's our responsibility. We have to take, we have to grow up. Okay. And yeah. we have to take responsibility for ourselves. Doesn't matter what we've been through in our life, it could be at this very moment in time. We have to grow up and take responsibility for ourselves. Right. So, so that, that Christian that comes up and says, that's great, GW, that works for you. I'll check the Bible out, but I'm not walking into a church. Yeah. What's your response? That, it's, you know, we, we fellowship and, it's, and we go there to be with, with Christ. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not going there because we're dressed a certain way, right. you know, and it teaches us, you know, to dress in moderation, mm -hmm. you know, right. not to have something hiked up one way or pulled down another. Right. It's, it's we're there to have a relationship with Him. And I think if we take the, the focus off of clothes, we take it off of mm -hmm. skinny jeans and smoke and lights and everything else, right. and we go there to bring it back to Him, and if you're not in the right place, move. Right. Find you somewhere else to go. Keep, keep going until, until God plants you where you need to be. But I would say you need the fellowship and you need the... Uh, the other people around you that way if if you're slipping or you have a question that you can find the answers right. together what would you want to share with especially the christian community after coming almost out of the season of the pandemic what would be your encouragement to them as we walk forward into a new year i would say the the thing that stands out is unity because there's so many, well, you're this religion, well, you're this religion, you're this religion. And, and I don't recall reading in here um, when, we, when we're in heaven that we're going to be at this church, this church, and this church. Right. We're, we're going to be in God's church. And that's the one thing is, is unity. Because, you know, if everybody can't even decide 
well, I'm not working with them because they're not, they're not a part of this church. Right. And it's kind of like with some of the organizations where we feed the hungry. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own little niche or their own little click right. that they're going to. And it's without one accord right. and unity, the enemy always is going to win. Yeah. What has Jesus been teaching GW in the last six months? To do things... Oh my goodness. He wanted me to do an audio book mm. and I had never done that before. And I was actually deaf as a child hearing impaired. Yes. So with that, uh, until my second year of high school, they did emergency surgery. Mm. And so English, spelling, grammar, punctuation. When God wanted me to write the first book, I said, you have the wrong person. But he planted that like a baby inside of me. And I was going to have that baby. I was going to birth that baby yeah. no matter what. Right. And so now working on book 14, and 11 in the yeah. last year, that's all God, that's not me. Right. And so then he wanted the book turned into an audio book, one of them, and it was the hardest book for me to even write. I didn't want to write the story. Yeah. And then that's the first one he wants done as an audio book. And so he's taught me how to do things. There's been a lot of whining, a lot of crying, me laying on the floor going, mm. God, I just, I need help. Yeah. And so the things that we think that we can't do or we don't have purpose, uh, he will always make a way. And yeah. God is just greater than anything that I could ever imagine. And the right. things that he's done, even with this show. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's not my show. It's his show. Amen. I just show up. Yeah, that's right. What would you say to that young man, that young girl, that whether they have a physical issue you know, as a child or whether they have something going on in their life that, like you did, where they might feel disqualified mm -hmm. because of that. What would you, from your experience, what would you share with them? When I was 20, I had ruptured two discs and bulged a third one in my back. They said that I would never walk again. And so I didn't take that on because I knew I was going to walk again. Right. And just kept going through that. I mean, I, I was the youngest that had had Bell palsy at the time. Mm. That's kind of like a stroke. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there'd been, you know, multiple car wrecks where drunk drivers had hit us head on. So there'd been a lot of difficulties to go through. But I think it's uh, never give up. Mm. If you think of yourself as disabled, then you're disqualified. Right. But if you see your ability to keep going and just letting God drive the bus, it's, uh, you can do anything that God wants you to do. Yeah. So what, what scripture would you like to share with your audience? I would say you're beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. And he knew us before we were even born. Right. And he formed us. And it's just, he already knew the plan. And he already knew our destiny and everything that we're supposed to do. It's just when we decide we don't want to do it or we think we're not good enough or when he flips the script, mm. sometimes that makes us, makes us nervous, makes us sweat right. and we're uncomfortable. And, and I have said, you know, I have become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. So with going back to, going back to the scripture, with that person that says, GW, I, I just, I just don't understand. I just mm -hmm. don't understand it. I, I just don't. I see the words. I read the words. Mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Yeah. How would you? What encouragement would you give somebody to to really be able to get into the word and it really come to life for them? Is there anything that mm -hmm. you did that that helped the words come to life for you? There was. There was. Um, it's called the Bible Project. It's on YouTube. Okay. I will actually watch that. It gives a, an overview, okay. so that, that helps me. And then there's a Bible app, that, uh, and I use the NIV, okay. and I will listen to that. I will play it as I'm reading through the King James Version. Okay. And so that's where I'll go through and I'll, I'll highlight, right. I'll, write my, I'll write my notes. Okay. If I come to a word um, and I don't understand the word, used to I would just like, read on through it and I didn't understand. Yeah. So now actually what I do is um, I will go and I'll look up that word and I will write that in my Bible. Some people don't like that you write in your Bible, yeah. but this is my time with God. Right. 
And so as I sit there and I do that, if I don't know what the word means, or even with Goliath, how, how big his sword was, right. I want to go and, and flip that around and right. see how big that sword was and find the images and, right. and even the weights because yeah. it kind of modernizes it, but it, it gives me a, a realization of, wow, that was really big. Yeah. And then God had blessed me with uh, going to Israel mm. and, and he sent me by myself. Yeah. So I didn't have a experience like, whoo, my goodness. Uh, you know, when, when I got off the plane, it, it hit me when I looked out the window and I'm like, there's no one here to pick me up. Mm. There's no one that knows where I'm at. If I'm in trouble, who do I call? How are they going to come and get me? Mm. And it, it puts the, the rubber to the road of, do you trust me? Right. And right. now for a new Christian, somebody that's maybe never been in church, never opened up this love letter. Is there a particular uh, Bible that you would suggest for them if they're brand new, no, no background whatsoever? I would say the NIV, that's, I mean, I'm not an expert in this, but it's, yeah. that's a little uh, easier than the, okay. the they's, the them's, and trying to, trying to sort through yeah. that. Right. But I think that's, uh, I think just looking at, not starting at the beginning, I would just say maybe start with uh, the where Yeshua, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John right. start start in the Gospels, right. and yeah. and and that's what sometimes I will say is uh, when when you go to some places they they speak Christianese, right? And and I know that they're you know they call it the milk and the meat, yeah. Um, but the way I like it, if someone brand new's come in, um, give them both. Give them the meaning of whatever you're speaking about and, and give them the people that's been there for a very long time. Right. That way everybody is on kind of the same page and it gives it a, a broken down understanding. Yeah. Well, you mm -hmm. know, you mentioned earlier about writing your Bible. I know there's a lot of people that frown upon that, yeah. but I always look at it as this is, this is God's journal and love letter yes. to us. So why shouldn't we be writing just like we would in a journal, writing what we're experiencing. Because, you know, when you write, you highlight something, you know, you can go back to that. Especially when you're, you just flip your Bible open and you go, oh, why did I highlight that? And then you start reading and you go, oh, yes. And it brings you back to maybe a struggle you were going through. Mm -hmm. And that scripture really helps you get through at that time. And you're like, oh, I remember that moment. I see how God helped me overcome that. Yeah. You know, so I think it's important that we, you know, we write in it, we mark it up, you know. Yeah. Uh, so what, if you could spend five minutes with the leaders of our country right now, what would your, what would you want to share with them? I think when God was taken out of our country, it, God didn't leave us we left him mm, okay. and and by doing that it's we've made our choice when you took God out of schools and I think you know our country was founded on God mm -hmm. and God we trust right it's on the money and everywhere else and as long as we've done that and supported Israel we've been blessed right. because that's what his word says right. and and I think it's going back to the fundamentals of putting God back into everything and supporting Israel. Right. What would you want to say if you were in an auditorium with some of the leading pastors in our country? What would, what would you want to share with them? Get past yourself. Mm. It's not about you. Okay. I think it's, uh, it's going back to the unity in one accord and Again, not having people like us right. or your skinny jeans or entertaining. It's uh, when you entertain and you get, you know, three to five minutes of, of God's word and you sit there and you sing for 45 minutes. Right. Um, that's fine. Yeah. But the thing is, you're not giving people enough. You're giving them the bread and no meat. Mm. Wow. And when they leave or they... 
are they just full on bread and it's their belly swollen? Yeah. Or, or are they having a relationship and you go through and you're actually teaching? Yeah. Because without that, and just teaching prosperity is not the way to do it. Right. You know, Yeshua didn't write just part of this in, in one thing. He gave through and said they hated me first. Right. And the world has never gone back to the way it was. Yeah. We're, in a, we're in a new day. Yeah. And we have to know where we're going. And that's why if, if you read, you understand what the next steps are coming. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, so when that does happen, yeah. then you're comfortable and you're calm because you're like, God is large and in charge. Right. And no matter who is in government, the Bible says that we pray for our leaders. We right. pray for our government. government. Yeah. Just because they're a Democrat or Republican or Independent or whoever they are, it doesn't say only, pl only pray for this party or this party. It right. doesn't say that. Right. It says pray for your government. Pray for your leaders because it goes well with them that it goes well with you. Right. So let's go back to the new believer. Never okay. been in church before doesn't know anything about church, what advice would you give them, a new believer, when they're looking for a church to attend? What should they, what should they look for? Gotcha. It's, um, again, if they have a lot of the theatrics and, and they're trying to be a, a theme park, then that's kind of a, a flag to me. Uh, but if they have the Word of God and they're teaching from the Word of God and they don't, add or subtract from it because that's what the Bible says. Do right. not add to my word and do not subtract. Right. And, and they're following along with that, then, then you're where you need to be. Right. But if you're off of here and they're having other fundamental conversations, okay. then that's kind of, a, kind of a flag. Okay. So based on your experience being dragged to church as a kid, walking mm -hmm. away for all those years, what encouragement would you want to give just the Christian community as a whole? Mm -hmm. What would be your encouragement for them? I would say just to be Christ-like mm -hmm. and your, your tone and the things that you say to people and how you speak to people is, you know, if you're stuck on I-4, you know, are you giving hand gestures and blowing the horn and, right. you know, with I love Jesus on the back of your car, right. take the sticker off. Right, yeah. And <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> and just take the t shirt off, take the earrings off, take the cross off because right. um you're just giving everybody a bad rap. And Yeah. So. And it's about like I said, being Christ like and right. uh faith, hope and love. And if you go through the life with fear mm -hmm. and every moment is a fear, every moment is a worry, yeah. you're attracting that. Right. And and if you read the Bible and it says how many times of, you know, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. Right. Yeah. And, and if you're already dead to yourself, it doesn't matter what goes on. Right. Things are things. It could be gone tomorrow. So one word, what would your, what is your hope for as we get close to ending this year out and going into 2022? Mm -hmm. What? What would be your, your word that you would want to take into or your phrase that you would want to take into the new year? I think step out of your comfort zone. Let God drive the bus. Okay. Take your hands off the wheel once you let him drive and see where he goes and what he gives you. Yeah. Pray that he brings you the right people, the right yeah. godly people. Remove the, the ungodly people from your life or whoever's there that needs yeah. to be removed because when you pray that prayer, right. they're going to leave. Right. And don't go chasing them. Yeah. Don't go chasing the doors that's been closed. Yeah. Keep going forward and, and just be still and pray and let, and let God yeah. guide you and lead you. Okay. As, we, as we move out of this year, what is your hope for your fellow Christians, our fellow Christian brothers and sisters, what's your hope for the church? What's your hope? Not, not, not the four wall mm -hmm. church, but what's your hope for the church outside of those four walls? Yeah, because when, when the church is closed, you know, some people are saying, if you're sick, don't come. But you know, the, the, the verse says, your sick people bring them to the church and to the elders and, and anoint them. Right. It doesn't say, oh, you have COVID go away. Um, right. I think it's just opening their eyes to see 
to read God's word right. and and everybody come together and, and that's one of the things again it goes right back to unity and and not just because they're one church or another church it's mm -hmm. uh, everybody and when you're out and about again because people, there's eyes on us constantly. Always. They're waiting Always. for us to slip up what we say yeah. to someone to make us angry. Yeah. Um, something to torque us in one direction or another. And we're human. Yeah. And. Right. So for that, especially for that new Christian that's trying to figure it all out, mm -hmm. what encouragement would you give them when they do slip back into that old behavior? It's, you know, because... We didn't have to be to a certain point f to be saved. Right. And I would just say just keep going forward and just keep praying your way through it. Right. Because sometimes God won't take it away from us. He, we have a choice to stop doing whatever right. sin it is. Right. And if we don't stop doing that sin, then you know, it's kind of like being on the roundabout. Right. And I know when I've done something, I'm like, oh, no, here we go again. And sometimes the roundabout's even bigger. Yeah. And the wax are going to come, and, yeah. and I know that uh, I've done it, so. Yeah. so just don't give up. Yeah, uh, and for the new Christian, what share the importance of fellowship, especially for that new believer. Yeah, that's being around Christ-like people and, and Christ-minded people, not gossiping about each other and doing the things and talking about the pastor. It's, it's about getting together and, and going through God's Word and listening mm -hmm. to testimonies right. because someone else could have gone through something and it's it's just being around the right people right. and the fellowship and right. that's just breaking bread with people yeah. because you can go to lunch with someone, you can meet up for coffee, you can say a prayer and you never know who you're going to meet right. why that's happening. Yeah. And even in the dealership, wherever you're at, right. it's, uh, I was sent to the grocery store and, and the young man, God had asked me, said, ask him how he's doing. I said, how are mm -hmm. you doing? And he said, fine. And I heard God say, ask him how he's doing. How are you really doing? Yeah. And I said, how are you really doing? And he said, my mother and my grandmother are dead. My mm -hmm. aunt and uncle were just murdered and I don't want to live anymore. Mm. So. A lot of times when we walk into a store and they say, can I help you? You're going to say, no, I'm fine. But you're looking for something. Right. It's just an automatic response. Mm -hmm. We don't know what someone's going through. And that moment of interaction can change their life, can change our life, right. and can change a whole bunch of yeah. things. So what encouragement would you give those that are walking through some storm in life, whether that's a health issue, relation issue, mm -hmm. uh, financial issue, especially with the times right now, with the finances and with the, the economy and stuff like that, what, what would you share with someone that's walking through something right now? And that was like the, the first time I had lost my job. It was, uh, I was laid off mm -hmm. and I panicked. Of course, there was no peace because I didn't have God in, in the middle of the storm. Right. And so I just kept applying, 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 applying and just literally almost seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I mean, just that's all I focused on. Yeah. Uh, so when last May, when my job ended, um, they released our whole entire team. Mm. And so it was, I had that, just that moment of panic. Right. And then I heard God say, you have a job, you work for me. Mm. Productions by Faith and Kanana Ministries. Mm. And it was, a, it was a totally different calming that came right. over me. And it's like he, He's brought me this far. Right. He's not going to turn his back on me. Yeah. And can you mm. share about the the one ministry that you just uh, shared at the end here? So that ministry is working with timed out children, right. aged out of foster care, right. and also working with the homeless. And so I didn't understand the the timed out okay. until there was a couple meetings and right. there was a lady, she said, I work with timed out children and I didn't yeah. understand that. Yeah. And so, and God said, my love never times out. You know, and, and what, and what a, uh, you know, like a description to put on a young person, you're timed mm -hmm. out. Yeah. You know, and that just gives you and everyone that works with young people in foster care, just more of an urgency to say, no, no, you're, you're not timed out. Mm -hmm. You might be timed out of this program, but 
Don't believe that God's got you timed out. Yeah. So what, what last words would you have for your, for your audience today? I would say make your plans and let God laugh because our plans sometimes, I'm sitting here, never thought I would be doing this. Right. Um, never put limitations on yourself of mm -hmm. what you think that you can do because God can do anything God wants to do. Right. And just, I think just breathe yeah. and pray and listen right. because it's all about the being still because if he's changing the job, it, something better. Right. If he's having you move, it could be something better. You're being protected. Right. If it's changing cars, it could be something coming better. Right. And I think when we have that mentality of letting the material things go and let God be God yeah. and let God guide, right. it's, uh, things just run a whole lot easier. Yeah. What would you want to say to your younger self about how you're doing now after walking away from the church? I'd say, whoo, what a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> but God took that hot mess and he turned it yeah. into his masterpiece. Right. And, and I think it's just, uh, just hang on. This is going to be a storm, a storm, a storm. Because it was, it was, it was a hard ride. Yeah. But, you know, it was a lot of lessons that God had to peel the things off of me. He had to peel the pride off of me. Right. He had to peel the arrogance off of me. He had to peel the me just working to work for a 401k and just a house, a car, and all the dream right. things. Right. Um, the whole dynamic has shifted. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, God, you've got this, and yeah. whatever you want me to bend me, right. that's one of the things is here I am, Lord, use me. Yeah. And you would have never heard that from the right. younger self because yeah. when God had asked me to go into ministry, I'd said no. He gave me the opportunity and, uh, and I had declined. Mm. And so I knew what I needed to do, what I was supposed to do, I didn't want to do. Right. I wanted to party. I lived in Nashville for 17 years. Yeah. Been around all the who's you can think of. Yeah. And, but the thing was, even with all the alcohol and everything else, I was never happy. I was never at peace. I was right. never at rest. I was never calm. Yeah. And now I'm the most peaceful, where when something happens, I just go, okay, God, you got this. Right. And I sit back and look sometimes and I just go, wow, I can't believe I'm here at this point. And, and yeah. how did you do that? You know, because it's just sometimes the miracles happen. Right. And so the person that's going through that, going through that storm like you went through and they're searching, they're searching, they're, they're, they're racing after you know, the big house, the rays, mm -hmm. all the all the things that the world says are successful. I mean, you kind of walk through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to them? So the thing about that is when you die, are you going to be thinking, who gets the house? Who gets the 401k? Where's this money going? Um, I think the thing is you need to look at when I die, where's my soul going? Mm -hmm. And when I die, is my loved ones around me and my friends, are they going to be wondering, well, he was politically correct. Uh, he never talked about anything of, of God. Yeah. Is, is he in heaven? Right. Is he in hell? I don't know where he's at. Mm. So I think the thing is, no matter what you're trying to achieve, if your things that you haven't laid up in, in heaven in the right place, right. they're either going to rust or the moth's going to eat it. Yeah. And so in the end, what's important? Yeah. So that person who says, but you don't know the life that I've lived, it's, it's too late for me. Mm -hmm. God would never take me the way I am. What would you say to them? I would say God doesn't look at all the things we've done. Look at the people in the Bible. They were the worst of the worst. Right. The murderers and different things. He gives you the opportunity to go through. He accepts you as you are. Mm -hmm. And that's where you just have to 
repent of the things that you've done right. and you go through, but you have to admit that you're a sinner. You have to admit yeah. that what was done was done yeah. and, and you want Him in your life as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. Because if He's not your Lord and Savior, He died on the cross for all of us, right. but there's still the process of what we have to go through to accept Him. Right. And I think if we don't accept Him and let Him take over and, and plead the blood of Christ mm -hmm. and be baptized and stay in His Word, right. it's like, what kind of friend are we? It's just kind of one-sided. Yeah. It's a relationship. It's not a religion. Right. So with the folks that knew you in Nashville, what do they think of you now? They stand back and they, they just, uh, they're in disbelief because it was the partier, it was, uh, it was the person that was yeah. drinking and just angry, just right. so angry because when something didn't go my way, mm. I was the nicest person that I could be. But once you pass that, that second with me, um, they knew mm. that there would mm. be a brawl and, okay. and and it was a brawl that I didn't care which ended either way. Mm. So those who have walked similar path as you have are had some sin in their life. Uh, maybe they're still, even as a Christian, still maybe dealing with different sins. How would what would you say to them that those that are living in shame, like they just can't, they just can't seem to say. Mm -hmm that's not me anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and they keep, and they're not being all that God wants them to be because mm -hmm. they're living in that shame of their past. Yeah, and that's where the enemy wants to keep us. He wants to keep us in, in the shame and he wants to keep us from telling our stories mm -hmm. because I think when, when you tell the truth and you tell your stories mm -hmm. it, and you pray and you just give it to God, it's, it's a release. Mm -hmm. So telling my story, my testimony, Every time I tell it, it just breaks another piece off of me. Yeah. Because we never know who is on the other side of the camera, on the other side of right. the counter, yeah. on the other side of wherever we're at, right. uh, that might pick up that one little thing. But it's just, when someone tries to tell me where I have been and they try to bring that up, I tell them, Jesus paid the, the price for all that. Right. That's not who I am anymore. Right. I won't let them speak that back into me because that's just the enemy. Right. That's not who I am. Yeah. So the power of the testimony, what, what would you like to say about that? I would say if you have a story, no matter what you've been through, it's tell your story because if we're not telling our testimony, we're hiding our light under a bushel. Right. And it's uh, without letting that light shine through because some people say, well, I don't want people to know my finances. I don't want them to know that I was sexually molested. I don't want them to know right. these things. But it's, it's not about that. It's about you got through it. Right. And at that point, it's you have the point in your life to say, this is who I am at this moment. Mm -hmm. I own this. I own the responsibility for all the things that I do from this point. Right. My choices of whatever I do at this moment is going to go forward. Mm -hmm. And if I make the wrong choices, that's on me. So as if I'm praying and say, God, what do you mean to do? It might be something so far off course and something that we never thought we would be doing. Right. But it's always for the best. If he says, don't go down that road, there's a reason not to go down that road. Right. And if you want to be disobedient and... Yeah. Come what may. So for the person who says, well, GW, you're, you know, your, your testimony is amazing. You, you know, God brought you through all this and now he's doing this in your life. I came to know Jesus when I was five years old, 10 years old, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't have a story because mm -hmm. I've always been in church. What would, you, what would you tell them? I would say everybody has a story. Yeah. And just because you think that you're just a housewife for, with your children, you're there, you have the opportunity to be with them and right. read them uh, Bible stories. You can go through and watch videos with them of, of talking about the Bible. Right. That's planting the seeds. You're basically um, a Bible teacher. Right. And it's, uh, so no matter what you do, because I, I hear people all the time say, I don't have a story, mm -hmm. but it, no matter what happens as we start to speak, 
then there's always something there. Right, right. And they just deem it as, well, I wasn't dying left for dead. Yeah. Or everything that I've been through, but right. I'm not going to reach everybody. You're not going to reach everybody. Right. Somebody's going to relate to someone else. Mm -hmm. And it's not about us being the superstar. Right. It's about Yeshua Jesus being the, the right. star. He's yeah. the star of the show. This is his show. It's not mine. Right. I just show up. Yeah. And he flipped the script on me today. So. Yes, he did. Yes. Yes, he did. So, you know, it's it. You know, when we talk about, you know, I always hear people go, "Oh, you know, Todd, your testimony, it's it's this," and I'm sure you've gotten that with your testimony. And that person that tells me, "Well, I got saved when I was five, mm -hmm. ten years old, and I never," I, I always tell them, "You have the greatest testimony ever because yeah. God kept you from." getting involved in, in, in something that you know wasn't right, caused, you know, kept you from being addicted to something, mm -hmm. you know. And so I always encourage folks that have basically grown up in the church that you have the greatest testimony that there is because yeah. God literally kept you from what so many others have had to go through. Yeah. It's a, it's a shielding. Yes. And that's as we walk. It's, I know not to go to the left, to the right, right. to go too far forward or, or be lagging behind. Yeah. Because as long as I'm right there with him, he's going to protect me. Yeah. But if I do something on my choice, I know that I'm out of alignment. Right. And that's where I want to be in his alignment and say, okay, Father, I, I, want the, I want the blessings and the favor because I know if I'm right with you, then I'm right where I need to be. Right. And if I'm doing something I don't supposed to be, then I expect that something's going to come from that. So. Yeah. All right, well, I think a, a lot of people learned a lot of things about you today, and yeah. it was fun uh, being on this in this chair instead of in that chair. <laughs> in the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. For taking time and, yeah. and working with Flip the Script. All right. All right, everybody. That's it for Watch Your Story for today. You never know what's going to happen next, so we'll see you on the next one.